Alright, hey, welcome back. Welcome to Wildstar. Uh, <coughs> I was uh, making some videos on how to uh, create a pawn. And I made a video on the uh, Royal Piglet. Now, I have finished my pawn. My land is still a work in pro progress. And I'm actually working on a custom ship now. So, before I dismantle my Royal Piglet, I wanted to let you see what I've done. The uh, Royal Piglet is finished with everything I'm going to do to it. But, after all was said and done, I decided I wanted something um, that I built myself. So, first of all, let's take a look at the pond. Oh, one thing. One of the things I've done, is, like I said, the land is still being worked. But I, what I attempted to do was picture frame everything. And I'm not exactly sure if you can see the cursor. This is a brand new video recorder. Oh, and by the way, the voice track is on, on, uh, on track with this one. What I'm using now is Overwolf. I hadn't used it before, and I got it either with my gamepad or my motherboard. I just upgraded to uh, Windows 64 then. to uh, increase the amount of memory you got, which helps a lot even though Windows only sees uh, 4 gigabytes of memory. Actually, 3 once the uh, system actually takes a share. But when you add extra memory, if you have a motherboard that can juggle memory like mine, it actually did improve quite a bit, but it didn't prevent it all together. So I then installed 64, Windows 7 64 bit. My problems completely went away. I have not crashed in Wildstar since I did that. So that is something to think about. Uh, one thing to know, okay, one thing to know is when you do that, you need to back everything up on your hard drive you want to keep. I got an external drive and I did that. Because when you go from 32-bit to 64-bit, it's gonna, you're going to end up having to reformat your drive and wipe everything off. I've tried to install it over it. It makes a big mess out of it. I'm a uh, A-plus certified computer technician, and I'm telling you the best thing to do when if you're going from 32-bit to 64-bit is when you're installing it, it'll give you the option to uh, delete the partitions, and you're going to want to do that, and you're going to want to uh, reformat those partitions. Also, if you're using a firewall, I tried the little Komodo. It works fine on 32-bit. It completely destroyed my partition table in 64-bit. So, I'm using the Windows firewall, which actually turns out to be good enough. There's better firewalls out there, but you have to pay for them. The Windows firewall that comes free with Windows since I believe XP, maybe uh, a later version of Windows, but that firewall is going to be pretty much as good as the free firewalls you use, because you basically you get what you pay for. Now, that said, the pond. Now, in the last video, I was having problems having uh, getting the pond to uh, the top to match up to the rock. So what I did is I used these mossy overhangs here to hide that. I increased the size of the pond a bit, and you can see that it's uh, yeah, it's not bad. Put some plants out. Now I'm going to get another waterfall kit so I can uh, get more plants for. Yeah, you guessed it, the second pond. So they don't want, I haven't seen any fish. So I got this, and I'm going to get a couple more. I bought it at the auction house. I don't know where they dropped. But this is it. It's one waterfall, 
falling down into another waterfall that's recessed in the ground. A lot of these plants and stuff, the tall plants you see here, are actually made of. Now, here's my second part, which actually is something I'm working on. This was going all the way back to like a small river. I've got, uh, this is a celestial, what is celestial? Biome. Yeah, let's see. As you can see, yes, Celestone Biome. Biome. And I just got it because it fit into the landscape. And when I added the water, it actually came out pretty nice. Now I've got to doctor up the edges. You can see this is a kind of a square edge. And I might take that into like a little small creek bed going into the uh, this biome here. I've used the heel kit. I'm about to get, get another one. This is my tier 3 mine. But I, I used the heel, uh, one heel kit and I'm about to get another one so I can add some more heels to my land. So going around behind the waterfall I bought this bridge from the housing vendor and I crafted these totems. You can buy these totems in the, in the auction house. And as you can see, the water actually is running. I increased the size of the largest uh, of the waterfalls and it's running into a creek. And basically, this is just one big waterfall recessed below these hills. I decided to put a little village or a little hut here. In the background, you can see my next project. Out at the uh, my crafter station, I decided to add some hollow screams that I bought from the cash store. Just for some nice effect. Now this tier 3 mine, in my opinion, is rather atrocious. I got to, uh, I'm going to have to doctor this up a bit. I haven't really given a lot of thought to what I'm going to do with it. I've, I'll talk to my wife a bit about what we should do with this and then something but in the end this is going to look a lot better once I finish with it. So now on to the Royal Figly. Now as you might have seen in the other videos I've added a portable hollow projector kind of like a deflector dish it has a tribute to Star Trek because that's I am a big Star Trek and Star Wars fan. I added a uh, Marauder Cannon uh, not Cannon missile launcher to the top and I have four engines on it. This is the, this is all of the upgrades that you can no those aren't but the door the side the top and the tail that's all of the uh, all the upgrades that you can get through the house So if I go to the standard cockpit back far enough you'll be able to see the change. So that's the standard cockpit. That's the uh, jumbo cockpit. The walls, you can see there's a change in the wall hull plane. The entrance, and I don't know why they call it, they call it entrance, but it's actually the wings. So you can see the stock wings. And the door being the final piece. Stock door. And then board and stair high tech. Now going inside, I've made a lot of different changes to the inside. I am set up a little kitchen area here, complete with a stove. I finished 
I have a mop and a mop bucket here because there's a shit that you have to clean. I got this sign as a bathroom sign. I have no idea what it really says. I finished the bathroom. So you have your energy type shower. You got uh, a vent fan because that's important in the bathroom. A light that you can actually turn off and turn on. Of course, your super flush toilet with toilet paper in your bathroom sink. Here is uh, I expanded sick bay. I've got a doctor. A uh, Dominion uh, Medical Services. Uh, this is Dominion Medical Station. Not uh, uh, yet, right? Dominion Medical Station. On my tablet PC, I use some hollow screens to uh, make it look like at least it's doing something. I, this is still working. So, so I, I, I'm, I'm going to do something with this. I haven't quite figured it out what I want to do, but I kind of want to have like a wallpaper and maybe some kind of animation on it to make it look like it's actually doing something. We have three cots and a cryo chamber. That works. Well, I will. I did not know. Look at that. This is a cryopod arc ship. And I just discovered today that this actually goes do something. It goes right up into the ceiling. I had no idea. Okay, that was fun. But this is my medical bay. And it's oversized for the size of the ship. But when I was thinking the concept of this ship being being an exile ship, he would want to be able to go into areas where people are in it or where it's fighting or something like that. And he can this could function as a hospital ship. It can function as a cargo ship. I do have a small cargo area that can actually hold maybe about six of these containers. Four facing to the side, another two, maybe, yeah, another two that's kind of facing our horizontal. Now the key. The, the, there's actually a double wall to give these doors a place to go. So if you do have to dump your car, you can depressurize the hull, or pressurize the hull, uh, pressurize the car with a and dump everything out, which is what these two switches right here. This uh, welder I got for uh, being a signature and logging in. Next number of days, I think 50 days or something like that. So if I got to run, which I'm about to move over to my ship. Dominion panel, two exile generators, and a marauder gun. I tried to make as many things on the ship function as possible. Now, here I bought this hollow display in the cash store. And these three bronze ships I bought in the exchange, once again, I don't know what they are. So, this ship is kind of what I'm building now, but a little bit different. I'm building a cockpit that I can go into because this cockpit is the gunship cockpit, and you can't enter that if you make it the size. At least I haven't found a way to. I would love to have used that cockpit, but. When I made it full size, I wasn't able to get her. 
So this is what I'm building outside for my new ship. It's a ship based on what it is. It's going to be a cargo ship, but it's going to actually have walls around it. We'll make it into a, a new home as well. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to dismantle all of this to move it to the new ship, and that's not going to be the most fun thing. You can see this this actually have quite a few parts. It's got the many cannons and the tanks and a lot of stuff on it. And you can't transport this from inside to outside. You have to put it in your crate and then transfer it outside. The crew quarters area here. Guest area there. Now to light this, I've got two lights actually I have. provides a ton of light. The bottom light is a fancy hanging light in a, uh, inside of a orange pill, uh, pillar. And you can see that it, it made a good amount of light around this whole area. And the fancy lights look like this on one end, where you see right above my head, and then it has a little end. So it, it's a light on both sides, so you can stick it through a wall, stick it through the wall, and you have lights on both sides. I put a glass panel here, so you can actually look out into the car. Upstairs is the bridge. And as a exile, you pretty much get what you can. And so my bridge has some Elden uh, consoles, Frost Soul consoles, it's got minion consoles in it, this neat little game, which I have no idea if I bought this one from my house or any other I have my captain's chair. I have a panel that has three skulls in it. And here's the upstairs bathroom, which, which the upstairs shares with the bridge different type of layout for the shower. I still have the fan. I use the uh, technophase emitters to simulate a energy shower. So for role playing purposes you actually can strip down and get in there. And I'm sorry my mouse is jumping around a lot. I you know I guess I process stuff kind of fast so I'm always looking at things very quickly. Now, the reason there's two rolls of toilet paper, well, obviously you don't want more than one roll, but you also get a rest roll as well. So I actually added a shelf and put up a second roll for an additional rest roll. Once again, you can turn the lights on and off. And there is a cool valve for turning lights on. This is uh, the outside wall of my bridge for trophies. Inside the captain's quarters, the menu seat recesses in the ground, exile chandelier, uh, desk, uh, just you know, furniture that you'll find out there. Exile fireplace, my wife doesn't like this, but so she's building her own fireplace from scratch. I can't wait to go take a look. Once again, the lighting here is called really dark room. It's not really dark, but it's the darkest room I can find without having a black hole house. Now, that concludes my updates on the uh, 
royal piglet and the waterfowl. But let me give you a sneak peek at my latest project. before we go out there is for me things that I don't want to put out because I just don't like the looks of them but they have rest bonuses I stuck them in the storage shed like the Dominion bed um, an additional toilet that I accidentally bought because it came as a three pack and stuff that uh, has rest, rest bonuses I either have too many of or I just don't want to put them out I've actually stuck those in, in here and you can put them in any container wherever you want, behind a wall or something. And you can shrink things down and put them in these containers here and still get the rest bonus for you. And that's what I that's what I did. Okay, so let's let's take a look at my newest project. Okay, I wanted to do something a little bit different. So as you can see I am working on a new ship. Cargo ship of course. Now, what I'm using here is a Marauder floating platform, I think is what it's called. Let me see. Pad. Oh, a hovering landing pad Marauder. This is a Protostar floating platform. So from here, it's not looking too bad. But, like I say, it's going to be based on the other ones. We, you know, I have a lot that I've got to do to it. But it's got to be a house and a cargo ship. So once again, I have... It's going to hold a lot more. When you look at the size of this door... I can close it. The size of that door... You'll be able to stack. Looks like about three. Yeah, I could be able to stack about three of these on each side in a row of three. So we're looking at nine shipping containers here and whatever other things you want to put out here. So this has a lot more storage space and shipping space than the Royal Piglet has. Coming on to the bridge, and you'll see why I use a dome, I'm going to have my captain's quarters above inside this dome, this dome here. And the captain's quarters will have its own restroom. I'm going to have uh, the bridge restroom here, and I have not figured out what I'm going to do as far as crew quarters. Probably up, up, upstairs here. So you have the captain's quarters above the bridge. The crew quarters is probably going to be in this area up here. So they will have a lot more space than they have in the previous ship. And a recreation area and all that kind of stuff. So this is going to be a interesting undertaking. It's going to take a while to, to get this done. These I think I'm going to try to put them for into some kind of consoles. We'll see how that works out. This little front porch here. Once again, I don't know. So one of the reasons I wanted to uh, build my own ship is because there was no way in the Royal Piglet that I could ever be inside my ship and then sit there and look outside. So, as you can see, I'm using uh, riveted curved glass for my window. So, I can actually stand here and look out and watch my crew and their friends party away. And I'll just be able to just stand here and look out out of the ship. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you all. Uh, seen some of my other videos and maybe learned something because I definitely learned a lot making these videos and I learned a lot uh, from uh, trying to craft and, uh, and build things. 
I never cared for the, the square door because these things really they're really kind of touchy, really kind of flaky. Now I don't know how I'm going to do the door to enter the ship. This actually isn't going to be I'm not planning on this door right here being the way you actually enter the house. I haven't really decided that. I really wish they had some animated platforms where you can get in and actually go up to it. Oh, yes, there's a uh, this round part here. That is the uh, Technophage platform. And since there's no pictures out there to show you what these different things look like, this another reason I'm making those videos, these videos, is to actually show you what a lot of these things look like. This is what a technophage platform looks like, and it's actually much bigger than this. I had to shrink this down to fit it on this. The technophage platform is actually huge. Above me is just a uh, hollow dome that I'm but this, this thing is actually massive. And one of the things I have too that I'm going to put out, and I'm hoping one of you can tell me what it does, is... Let's see if I still... Let's see if I still know. This. What in the world is a technophage door? Because inside of a house, it does nothing. Outside, like here, or if you build your own house, you can actually jump through this. You can't turn this on or turn it off. I mean, anybody know what this does? I mean, you can click on it all day long. You can't do anything, but you can't. I know you can't jump through it if you place it inside one of the pre-built houses. Only if you uh, place it inside a house you built. They call it a door, but yeah, a door you can't close big deal. Anyway, so that's it. That this is the beginning of my new ship. I wanted to make a video to show the building of this ship, but I'm not doing that because one, I'm kind of winging it. I'm, I'm trying to just I'm kind of just winging it as I go. So I don't have anything really planned out. I just came up with this idea either the day when I came home for lunch or uh, no, actually it's last night. I uh, came up with the idea how I was going to do the top of this because I honestly didn't know. So it would take this video would be ten hours long if I tried to do a video of. of going and getting the parts and building the parts and, and uh, putting everything together. It would take way too long. So uh, I guess I'm going to do the next video when I uh, get the ship fairly put together, figure out what I want it to actually look like. I got the bridge idea down fairly well, but the, the walls, am I going to use straight up walls on the ship? Am I going to use angled walls or curved walls or, or what? How, how do I want the outside of this ship to look? So that's uh, going to take a little bit of uh, thinking and, and work. So once I get those, those little uh, things worked out, I'll make an update video. But right now, I've got the sad task of having to start dismantling the ship that I worked so hard to get it right and I've got to actually because this this ship is going to set here where the uh, Royal people set. Oh and one other thing that I discovered that I could do and I'm tempted to do it here and I'll show you this real quick. Let's see which which character do I have?
All right, and some of you probably haven't seen this, but I bought for one of my other characters a underground bunker, and I'm thinking about putting that ship over this bunker because it's kind of like two houses in one. Now, when you buy a house, it's kind of like its own instance, and that's why you can actually have big uh, objects that don't stick through the outside walls, and you can't do that when you're building a house. Because there's no way that you can build your own instance, you won't, you can't right now make a house where you can, where the floors and stuff fit right. So if you have like a round uh, room and all of the floors are square and you try to just expand one out, it's going to stick through on all sides. It doesn't happen when you use one of the pre-made houses because their houses is kind of uh, an instance. So this is just something I'm messing around with. It's it's huge actually. I believe I can get three stories in this, but there are so many options on how to uh, on how you can change things around in here. So many options. So I'm tempted to actually put this bunker under my ship or set my ship over the bunker because it'll give me it'll be like having two houses it'll give me lots and lots of, of actual storage space for stuff I don't want to put in my house um, you know, I can actually put everything out here and, and it's a work, good workspace where I can put things together and see what they're going to look like and all that stuff before I go up and so this is what the underground bunker look like for people that that uh, haven't seen one. It's just one big gigantic empty room. For I bought this to see what it looked like because once again no previews. This is a uh, garage skeleton, and here's a interesting quirk with these. Say I make this thing this big and then I'm going to uh, place this and I'm going to ride away where it rises out I don't know if this is far enough and when I get back yeah it should have reverted back to its original size so let's take a look place it further back for it to happen and maybe it's just only happening on my other land but if I get far enough where it rezzes out okay so it's rezzed out let's go back and see if it oh see it's staying it's staying that same size here hmm. so let me do this because it won't do that on mine For anybody who's through, they can go ahead and turn this video off. I'm just trying to uh, solve an issue. And I haven't turned my video recorder off. But then again, this may help somebody or somebody may have an answer for it. See, I got it at three, three, but it's not that size. So if I make it three, then we're gonna go out to the pad and then come back and we'll have reverted back to the uh, size that it was originally. So that's all as far as I have to go. And see I should be able to see it from here and I can. And look at this, it's, it's back to the uh, regular size and I think that's going to be with all uh, kind of projected images. And so let me uh, take a quick trip back here and take a look. Now, the other video program I had picked up my breathing and I 
It really do sound like Darth Vader. I'm hoping this doesn't. Oh, look at that. See, on his land, this side, it actually stays that size. What the? It doesn't do that on mine. Well, if any of you guys know a workaround for this, I would really appreciate it because what I want it to do on the other land is stay this size. Interesting. All right, people, that's, that's all I got for today. You're welcome to uh, ask any questions or if you want to know how to do something as far as housing go let me know and I'll see if I can figure it out if I don't already know or my wife might know it just depends. but you know this is I love I love the housing area in this game it's um, it's different because most games are just kind of like going out and fighting and stuff like that but I got to this one and, and creating things and building houses and all that stuff turned out to be quite a an attraction Beat my crew and some of their scallywag friends. I set this festival up. This is a tier three festival. I need to probably, I think I could do tier four and 30, but I'm not sure. But this is tier three. I set up a um, speaker bot, a bar, a cauldron, and I think the rest of this stock, uh, except for like a beer mug and stuff. Anyway, you guys have a great day. Uh, good luck in the game. Run into... If you see something that you haven't seen a video on before, feel free to uh, get a free program like Overwolf and uh, record it. Because I know there's a shortage of things like, uh, uh, like flares and stuff like that. And as I finally collect a lot of the flares, I'm hoping to make a video. Yeah, I know this is the player's so I have. Okay. The back player. Yeah, this video's turning all kinds of stuff. The um, rear flare is Throne of the King. Throne of the Hunter King. I think it's from the Ice Hunter set. You have the uh, keg, the kegger, which is the one that you buy in the uh, cash shop, and the uh, extractor. Uh, I think you get those from uh, from the cosmic points. The uh, saddle bags are the hail, uh, not hail. Which was these? Drag. Yeah. These are drag saddlebags, that's what they look like. The uh, noodle saddlebags, lop saddlebags, and extractor. So that's all I got so far. So, you guys have a uh, great day. And I hope to eventually one day see you in the game. Signing out.